Welcome back to Up to the Minute. We had a few technical difficulties, Brittany Pacheco. So let's tell the audience real briefly what happened. Our director, Lovely Windows, updated our director's computer, and the update kicked in while we were doing the show live a few minutes ago. So, uh, of course, the show crashed, and here we are back again. So he'll be joining us shortly, but we've still got our guests. We've still got a great show lined up for you. And Brittany Pacheco, just a few difficulties of things we deal with when we're doing things live. Hey, that's the way of life with technology. When you need it most, it doesn't want to necessarily be there for you. Uh, of course, I have my opinion about Windows over Apple computers, but we'll talk about that at a different time. But let's get right back into our show. We have some wonderful guests that we're uh, so pleased to have with us. Uh, we appreciate you both uh, working with us as we make these adjustments to up to the minute. That's right. Now, we welcomed Elizabeth Ho from HCC Coleman College. We'll be with her in a moment. But right now, let's start with Suzette Brimmer. Dr. Brimmer, uh, first off, I want to congratulate you because now you're the Dean of the Consumer Arts and Science Center of Excellence. Congratulations. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Now, you and I met uh, not that long ago for an in, for an episode of the topic, and we were talking about your program's involvement with community education and placing some of your programs online. Let's start with that on how you've made the transition with uh, placing some programs and specifically some classes online uh, to deliver to our students. Todd, it was a very difficult arduous task, um, which I'm sure you're well aware of. But what was really exciting is to see the team uh, camaraderie between the faculty. Uh, you have some faculty who are very uh, tech savvy, and they work very closely with their colleagues in order to get classes online. Um, a lot of like the visual uh, lounge was used quite a bit. And what we found out during this transition is what students really wanted and, and really uh, acclimated themselves to was when they can meet in one setting, uh, having classes at in a synchronous time online where uh, students could see their classmates, that that made the transition a lot easier. And, and I really do applaud the faculty. We had mentors uh, within all of our programs, the faculty who are stronger online and they really work very closely with their colleagues. Uh, so that was very, very exciting to see. Um, and going forward, we will always have this presence online. And it was really interesting to be able to learn, I mean, be able to teach students uh, things online, which we wouldn't think could happen. Well, we've all had to make that transition to online. And what you were talking about, though, sounds like uh, the students enjoy being online at a certain time and having that interaction virtually. And it looks like those type of classes are going to be offered in the fall with one of the choices online with a schedule. That's correct. You're absolutely correct. Yes. And, and our lab classes, what, uh, what I think is very exciting, you'll have a combination of both where you will be able to have theory online, but actually be able to come back on campus uh, to work in a lab, which is gonna look totally different with a lot less of your friends, but we're gonna make it work. That's that's the main thing. We're going to make it work, but we're asking our students and really the community to be a bit flexible because changes uh, really are taking place, even though we've got a number of classes and the types of classes in place that we're going to deliver in the fall. We all have to be flexible because guidelines could change as the semester progresses. I know you guys have a, a, a great building you just brought online uh, last year and really looking forward to showing it off to everyone. Let's talk a bit about the culinary arts building and I know there's going to be some social distancing inside that building especially uh, as students get into the labs and in the kitchens yes you're correct and, and what's really beautiful about this building is that the lab sizes they are quite large so that will be pretty uh, easy to do the distancing and this summer we're going to be doing videos there uh, to also enhance the fall classes as well as being able to broadcast our community learning classes from the new building. So I'm very excited about that. 
Yeah, we're going to be working with you guys, and I don't think people really know because we didn't get a chance to highlight it uh, before we all shut down. I know we were looking at doing that, but you guys have an actual kitchen with a quasi-television studio in it where you can broadcast online and uh, work with HCC TV to get some of your uh, video and content out there on uh, YouTube and, and places like that. Yeah, and, and Todd, that is very, very exciting. I'm very happy that we're going to be working with you all this summer and, and doing that kind of broadcast. Also, uh, I think it'd be great. <clears throat> the public will be able to have a tour of the building, see what the new building looks like. So then when, as we progress through, through this, our new normal, that uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to some normalness where we can have our classes back on, back on campus. Well, let's talk about a few of the classes that have been offered online and the popularity of them. Uh, baking and pastry like a pro. Tell us what that's all about. Yeah, so, well, you know, with any type of uh, career or um, any type of artistic thing that there is, there's always tricks of the trade. And so this, this is what the uh, pastry art chef, uh, Katie Ringel, is going to be doing is showing uh, the general public how to bake a perfect chocolate chip cookie. And the thing about baking, it really is a science, exact measurements, exact this, exact that, but there's always a little trick to make certain, like don't open your oven, you know, after you put something in for the first 10 minutes, those type of tricks. And that's what people uh, are gonna learn. And we're gonna have one segment where a uh, family member can work with their their children to also learn uh, how to bake things, which I think is really good, like banana bread, things that are sure. a little bit easier to be successful with. You call them tricks. I think nowadays on the web, they call them Oh, uh, baking hacks, <laughs> things kind of speed things yeah. up. But those are all aware. And you know, that's true. When I, you know, I'm, I, I do, do a lot of cooking, but when I learn the actual techniques and learn these hacks or tricks, it really changes and opens your eyes and it makes things a lot easier. And you certainly do bake or cook a better product when you're doing that. that that's correct. And it makes it look flawless. So everybody impressed. So that, and, and that, and of course, that's the name of one of the uh, segments is how to, um, Bake, uh, bake to impress. I also want to talk about something that I'm sure a lot of Houstonians are very interested, especially nowadays when people may be pinching pennies, building a timeless wardrobe. Tell us about that. Yes, our chair, Andrea Bonner of Consumer Arts, has been working on this as a project and it will be integrated into some of our fashion merchandising classes. But, you know, even if you're at home and, and you want to be casual, you still want to feel good about yourself. So putting together the right T-shirt color with the right gym shorts could make you feel a lot better. And then eventually we will be outside. We will be getting more dressed up. So this is a way to learn to work with what you have and make it look new when you step out into the world. We've got to figure out, Suzette, a way of corp incorporating shorts into men's wardrobe business <laughs> office because we're all wearing shorts. Um, you know, we may be dressed up, you know, looking like you're going to a board meeting, but we're wearing nice shorts, you know, I mean, uh, but yes. that seems to be the norm nowadays. Yes, yes. But I I'm sure when we return back to some sort of uh, normalness, uh, shorts are gonna have to go to the, are gonna have to be out of your wardrobe or go into the office. Yeah, sewing essentials, I don't think but sewing also falls under your center of excellence. Maybe you can tell us about how you've pivoted some of your operations to show people how to make masks. Uh, yes, it's, it's been quite interesting. We, we've got uh, some fact, uh, Jose Salcedo, and he is teaching our sewing essential classes. He set up a studio in his home, which several of our fashion faculty have done. Uh, they've invested in cameras so that they can give students and the general public a very um, robust education in learning how to make masks, how to alter uh, some of your garments, how to, uh, like if you've got an item, like you've got an old t-shirt, how to make it into a pillow, how to, how to do something really crafty with it, and also things that you can do with your family members. But video has really been 
the like the saving grace uh, for us, like a lifeline in connecting with our students and connecting with our community. It sure has, and you know we are we're really looking forward to working with you guys next month. You get back and somewhat in the buildings to uh, make those videos. Um, you know we could certainly get them out there on the web and and share them as needed. Yes, we will. Suzette Bremer, we appreciate you being here and joining us here on Up to the Minute. We look forward to seeing you in the future. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Now we're going to move across town. We've got uh, someone from HCC's Coleman College join us. Uh, joins us, Elizabeth Ho, direct the uh, from the sonography program. Um, welcome to the show, Elizabeth. We appreciate you being here with us today. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program. It has a big title, but it's something that's being used in hospitals on a daily basis. Maybe you could tell us about some of the professions, the applications, and then we'll get into the certifications and the degrees that are available. Great. Yes, um, so our program was established in the early to mid-1990s. Uh, and um, so our program or our field is basically um, scanning patients using high frequency sound wave. So when it comes to the medical field, there are um, different imaging modalities that people are aware of, but they're not really familiarized with sonography. Tell me, I know when, when COVID struck, a lot of the hospitals were shutting down certain areas, um, but there were a lot of patients who needed an ultrasound or sonography. Maybe they were cancer patients or somebody who's pregnant. How did that work during COVID? And were those positions, were they allowed to get in there on a limited basis? Uh, yes, so for patients, usually um, ultrasound is used to um, help in the COVID patients by scanning. We use ultrasound to scan the chest cavities. Right. And usually we look at the lung cavity to see if there's fluid um, collections in it for pneumonias. So we do have a small amount of patients that go through and get scanned with ultrasound, but uh, typically it was just through other imaging modalities. Sounds like it certainly was, uh, especially with the COVID patients and problems with their lungs, it was certainly something that was needed um, as now as, as more patients have been going in the hospital. Yes. So um, as far as I know, um, you know, the hospital environments right now, they are very bombarded with uh, COVID patients. But as far as us communication, communicating with our clinical affiliates, um, they are very overwhelmed, and for that reason, they haven't really accepted our students back to the clinical site. So, as far as how many patients going through, I'm not familiar rise with them. Tell me, though, about uh, the program itself and how you were able to transition online. Um, how did that work with this program? I know a lot of it is online or uh, hands-on instruction, but how did you work over this past semester with instructing your students? So most of our uh, informations are uploaded on Canvas, which is the learning management systems. So all of our information, our, our PowerPoints and lectures are being uploaded on Canvas. So students have access to the didactic components. Uh, in addition to that, we have um, the hands-on component, the students, which the students are missing. We do have the Sonosim um, system to help them, which is um, an online simulation system that the students use. Uh, but basically, the students transitioned pretty well. They are all very tech savvy, and they there wasn't any um, uh, hiccups or anything that, you know, that is uh, hindering them from getting the education that they need. Are your students now able to get back into Coleman College itself to do any labs there? I know uh, many of the colleges has opened up to allow the students to finish their spring semester. Can you tell us how that's going right now at Coleman in the Medical Center? Yes, so our Coleman um, students cannot have access to the campus right now, but on July 13th, they will be. Okay. And they will be able to go back and um, get their hands on practice in the lab. 
and they're actually really excited about this. I, you know, um, they haven't been skating since March, and so they're really looking forward to be back to the school and be back to normal. But of course, college is only opening up just so that the students could um, scan and be at, and have access to the lab. Right. I know uh, we're open just on a limited basis. Just and staff are not going to be on the campuses. So we want to clarify that. What's been the, I, you mentioned your students are excited to get back. I can imagine they are, but what's been the overall um, uh, feelings of the students and the reaction and feedback you've been getting since we've gone online over the last semester? Um, there have been mixed feelings. I mean, students, some students express that they are, um, you know, okay with uh, uh, having a uh, school, uh, have schools at home, but they really, um, since COVID hits, we can't send students to the clinical sites for their internships. And so that kind of pushed them back a little bit. Yeah. And due to that factor, they, we may have to extend graduation just so then once the clinical sites allow our students to be back, then they can, uh, you know, go back and finish out that practicum as sections and, and complete out their degree. Um, so some students are very upset that, you know, they have to push back their graduations. But um, overall, it is what it is. They accept the fact that this is uh, out of our control and sure. that it's very unfortunate that it happens, but it's something that we can control. So we have to do what we have to do to help these students to complete as soon as they can. I know, because I've talked to Dr. Nicotera about this in the past. Um, I know you guys were trying to get the students back to finish those clinicals, but I guess what really has happened in the last couple of weeks, which wasn't really thought of ahead of time or really was unprecedented, is the fact that we've had somewhat of another wave in Houston, and there are more patients. So you're saying that's really affecting your operations, especially with the students who were expected to be back in there now, at least completing those clinicals. Yes, correct. But, um, you know, today I've actually um, received two emails from MD Anderson and Texas Children's Hospital. They're starting to open up again and they're uh, beginning to accept our students to return to the clinical sites. And so, I mean, I think even gradually we'll, we'll, we'll um, begin to roll the students out to the clinical sites, um, but it won't happen in the summer semester. More likely it will be in the fall. So. We're just looking for the best and to sure. see if the hospital has their own protocol as far as dealing with students and um, with social distancing within the department. Once they establish that and allow our students to be back, we are more than ready to send them back there. Yeah, absolutely. I know they're wanting to get back there and, and, and complete their courses. Let me ask you this. Can you talk a, real briefly about the certifications you can get in this program? Is there a two-year degree available? Can they transfer to another institution for further education? Yes. So our program is accredited with the Commission uh, of, on Accreditation and Light Health. So what that means is we basically uh, ensure we have high standards of education and we ensure students can sit for the registry. Uh, we are accredited with a general concentration, which means students cannot sit for two registries, uh, which are the which are the abdomen and the OBGYN. Um, to me, that is just a, um, a stepping stone for students because once they finish this program, they can actually earn multiple certifications, uh, which includes breast, cardiac, vascular. Um, musculoskeletal sonography. So the more certificate they have, they can, of course, um, can work in different variety of area. Now, right. um, usually students who graduated from our program tend to go get a job and stay in the sonography field. Um, they do not need to go into a higher degree. Our program currently is an advanced technical certificate program. And so uh, when they finish, um, in order to get into the program, the student must have an associate degree or a bachelor degree. So they already have a degree in place before they go through our program. So more likely when they finish our program, they don't need a higher degree than that. So they can work in the field, in the uh, hospital clinical environment. And so um, to me, it's more um, advantageous for them to earn more specialties within the field of ultrasound than having to go to another degree. 
So I hope that answered your sure. question. No, it does. And it sounds like a great program if somebody's looking to get in in, in a short term. They can get out in working in a medical profession fairly quickly. That's what it sounds like to me. Yes. Tell me more if uh, someone wants to, uh, lo first off, can they register for the fall? Is that available? And where would they go on our website to find you guys? Yes. So in order to get in, because our program is very limited in space and clinical spaces, uh, clinical sites. So we, we actually have to, uh, in order to apply for a program, you have to uh, get accepted into the program before you can register for classes. So um, the application process is going on now um, and um, the it will be closed. We extend it. Usually the application deadline is June 1st, but due to COVID, they extend it to July uh, 1st. And okay. so, um, so students can apply for a program and if they get accepted into the program, then they can enroll in the fall semester. Perfect. So now is the time. Don't wait. If you have someone who's interested in this program, if you're interested, now's the time to go to our website and you can go to hccs.edu and you can search at the top for sonography, diagnostic, medical sonography, ultrasound. All of that will take you to this program. Elizabeth Ho, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having me again. Absolutely, and I know you're very, uh, very uh, excited about getting back in the building sometime sooner rather than later. Yes. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth. Too. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you. being here, Elizabeth from uh, HCC Coleman College for Health Sciences. We're going to move across town right now. We've got Brittany Pacheco who joins us from her nerd room. Brittany, are you there? Yes, I am here, Todd. Um, I'm always going to be here, never going anywhere else. Ever again. <laughs> never going. And I hear you're you're going to keep working there as long as possible. You know, I'm I'm going to make a case for it. So yeah, it's <laughs> you know I've said in the in the beginning it was difficult because I like many yes. others separate work life from home life, and now that we've had to fuse the two, I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's you kind of settled into it. It may have taken us 14 years to do so, but we've kind of settled into this working remotely thing and working efficiently. Um, there's a number of things going on around the college right now, virtually, and one of them is happening just in a little while, 11 a.m. today, uh, HCC Town Hall discussion on racism. Yes, this is going to be a very very heavy topic i know for many people and if you've been wondering how racism is affecting our faculty staff and students and police department at hcc this is something that you might want to participate in uh, you are required to register for this panel discussion to have an open and honest conversation uh, regarding racism so be sure to check your emails this is to all hcc faculty and staff um, we also have had this uh, event posted on our Facebook page, if you scroll down further in our feed, where you have the WebEx URL, again, for you to register to participate. This is happening this morning at 11 a.m. Uh, be sure to participate if you are interested. For those watching right now and wondering uh, why things look different, well, number one, we had a bit of technical difficulties. We went live for a few minutes. Our show crashed. Thank you, Windows, for making that happen. And then, uh, so we went back up live again. So we're running the show a few minutes later just to keep up on time. We have another event. You know, this week, uh, Juneteenth is taking place on Friday, and there is an event that's happening virtually, and it's got, it's called Protect Your Peace. It's today, June 16th, from 1 to 2 p.m., and this is also a WebEx uh, uh, presentation. Um, it says there's still time to register for the panel about processing grief, anxiety, trauma in this client, in this climate, Brittany. Yes, and it's going to be moderated by our very own Sharday Campbell, who's one of our uh, great colleagues. Uh, she's the HCC Enrollment Communications and Social Media Manager, and we've have a lot of guests who are licensed clinical social workers, HCC instructors, um, a former SGA president. So we're going to have a lot of great information again on topics such as grief, anxiety, and trauma, especially during these times of COVID and all the other social uh, events that are going on around the world. 
There's also something called Voices from the Movement, Thursday, June 18th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. That's on WebEx. It's a moderated, courageous, multi-generation panel of activists, scholars, journalists, and forensic science experts. They'll be speaking about how Juneteenth is a call to action for everyone to stand for freedom, justice, and equality. That's happening Thursday, June the 18th. And then on Friday, June the 19th, we've got a very special edition of Up to the Minute. We certainly do, do talk. We're going to bring back Dr. Jimmy Adams to share with us another one of his original pieces of poetry uh, to uh, to <laughs> signify this momentous uh, holiday. And it's actually a state holiday for many across the country. I know Nike just made a big announcement Thanks. about that. Um, but we're also going to be joined by our Chancellor, Dr. Cesar Maldonado, uh, on his remarks for Juneteenth. That's right. All that is Friday at 10 a.m. right here on Up to the Minute. A couple of things happening involving rec sports. One thing Brittany loves, virtual fitness classes, boot camps, and Zumba on Zoom. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to go with the boot camp. No, no, Zumba. Zumba? Yes. Okay. I'm good with Zumba. I, I have that on my uh, gaming console. It's been a while since I've been on it. But for those who are interested in taking a break from their working from home lives and want to participate in a virtual fitness class, this is something right for you. This is happening today at noon. Uh, it's happening every Tuesday and Thursday, at least this week. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can participate in a Zoom class taught by Dwayne Frazier. It's free sign up. It's open to current HSC students, faculty, and staff. You have to have an HSC email in order to register. So be sure to register today by emailing christian.andrews at hcs.edu. And know you're hopefully, most likely, not going to be on camera if you are you know, shy about you know, sharing your moves, but it's okay. Just get up, move around, have some fun. Brittany, one thing I want to talk about has been a big topic in social media involving the fall schedule. A lot of students have been asking, what's going on here? The schedule's down. Well, it's back up. It's back up today. Uh, in fact, there is some information floating around social media that we've been placing out there, a video that talks about the safe learning options and some amendments, or I should say some changes we've made to the fall schedule. You can watch also a very special edition of this show that's been posted in, in social media, uh, talking about the fall schedule, the classroom learning options, answering a lot of your questions. And there's also a website they can go to specifically for this, Brittany. Exactly, Todd. So that website is hccs.edu slash college your way. We've talked about the four different options available for students for this fall on safe learning environments. It includes online classes, uh, lab courses for those who need to take those skill labs in a very safe environment with minimum uh, students practicing social distancing as and also fec, uh, flex can't excuse me I cannot speak this flex. morning say it flex there you go flex flex okay. campus where you have the option of whether or not you want to go into the classroom or you want to take your classes online it's kind of like the hybrid courses but anyway yeah. to check out more information about that be sure to once again go to hccs.edu slash college your way we also have a YouTube video that's very short, very quick to the point, produced by our very own HCC TV members. And yes, we've had a lot of questions about what's going to be available. You know, maybe not all classes are going to be available in the fall or the classes that you want are not gonna be available in the classroom method that you want. So just be sure to go and check out the class schedule, see what is available and sign up early because those classes are going to fill up pretty quickly. They are, but one thing they wanted to get across when I talked to, uh, there's two vice chancellors on the up to the minute, um, but one thing they wanted to get across is that, you know, their guidelines may be changing according to the CDC or local authorities as, you know, we've had some cases of COVID rise in the past few weeks. The good thing about these schedules is we've made accommodations to either uh, increase the class size, make them smaller. You know, we, we are ready to be flexible to keep the learning going on so you can finish your courses. That's one thing they wanted to make clear. So they are uh, aware of this and they're looking for that in the fall. So make sure you visit that website to learn more about our fall classes. New initiative that we've had, well, that it's been going on for a couple of weeks, but it's still very important. Jobsnowhouston.org. 
Definitely. So uh, HCC has launched a program to retrain and retool Houston's workforce to fill half a million of the 1.5 million Houston jobs that were lost. So if you're interested in areas such as healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, IT, and construction, you definitely want to check out jobsnowhouston.org for fast track training provided by HCC to get you into that new career. So that wraps up the show for today. Brittany, we've got some special guests tomorrow. We've got the board vice chair, trustee Ava Laredo will be on the show to talk about one of her favorite topics, graduation. And she'll, we'll be recapping our first ever virtual graduation. We'll be talking with uh, our trustee Ava Laredo on the show. And also we've got two special guests to talk about diversity and inclusion. David Cross and Renee Mack from our Office of Institutional equity. They're both going to be here tomorrow, Brittany, so that should be a good show. It most certainly will, Todd. So we appreciate everyone who stuck around for up to the minute as we endured our technical difficulties. Hey, it's virtual times. This is what happens. Be sure once again to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel to check out the videos at your disposal, all produced by HCC TV. And last but certainly not least, please share this podcast so we can grow our audience, but also share this vital information to the masses. And we will see you again tomorrow morning, hopefully technical free, uh, <laughs> technical difficulty free rather at 10 a.m.